Hey everyone, guess who? Guess who's back? Do you remember me? <laughs> this is Rashonda, just in case you forgot, cause I know it's been like what, girl, it's been eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 months, I don't know. But this is Rashonda, your host of Matters of the Heart with Rashonda. I know, I know. It's been a cool minute <laughs> since I was last on. So much has been happening. And if I could do claps in between all those things I just said, right? And so much has been going on. It's been a whirlwind of a year. And it's crazy to say this, that while it's been a whirlwind of a year, this year is almost out. <laughs> Can you believe, like... I don't remember January. Well, I do remember January because that's when a lot of pivotal things happen. So I remember January very well. But it seemed like after that, I don't know, like things went Jack and Jill down the hill and oops, we're like three months to Christmas. So, you know, it's been a whirlwind of a year from seeking God's face to moving in a hurry, okay? Moving in a hurry moving from my place that I was at for like five years in a hurry. I can't say unexpectedly because the Lord told me two years prior that I would be moving. However, when the time came, things came really fast and moved really fast. I'm talking about like blink of an eye. Okay. I'm still catching my breath from it to be honest. <laughs> But God gave me a word even in the move. As things unfold, um, I'll be able to share more about that later when it comes up. So, you know, listen, even being gone these, these last couple of months, months, okay, um, I felt like my creative juices had gone to the tank. You know, in that time, it's not like I wasn't getting anything to talk about. It was just finding the time to record with everything in the world happening and going on. I did manage to get out a few videos over on my YouTube page, but I feel like things are coming too swiftly. I don't have time to even write it down quick enough. While things have been shifting during this stint away, the Spirit of the Lord gave me something in January um, of this year that I'm going to put into action within the next month or so. Okay. Within the next month. And that's a new podcast. Now I know you're probably saying, girl, I thought you just said you ain't had time to do nothing. Things was com things was coming to me. Yes. Right. <laughs> it was coming to me during this time. I just ain't had time to like sit down and like pen nothing you know, and whatnot. It's just, it's just been moving so fast, but God gave me the uh, vision for a new podcast. Yep. A new podcast. You heard me. There's a new podcast coming. And I mean, not just an episode, same platform, but a totally new podcast name is on the rise. And I wanted to share it here first on matters of the heart, because if you've been with me you know, if you've been with me on this podcast, right, this podcast started in like 2021, then you know I like to speak what's on my heart. And we've covered quite a few different topics on this platform with Sunday Thoughts and a Thursday Tip on the second Thursdays of the month. I shared my heart and what God has been giving me, and I hope you've enjoyed those episodes. But I'll still record on Matters of the Heart because I do have... Um, some Sunday things that I like to share. And at this point in my life, I'm just, whatever God tells me to do, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Are you, are you have are like, are you like that? I don't know if you're a Christian or not, but it's like you reach a point in your life where it's like, you know what, whatever, whatever comes, whatever happens, that's, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I don't care what I have to do to achieve it. I don't care what I have to do to get there. I'm just going to make it happen. Like, <laughs> you know, whatever. And so that's how I feel about God. Whatever he say, do, that's what exactly what I'm going to do. And it may look crazy to other people, you know, because what I used to do, and I'm going off script here, but maybe somebody needs to listen to it. I used to be so concerned with what people thought or what people think. It's like God would give me something 
And I would be so concerned with, well, what is this person going to say? Well, I wonder if God is dealing with this person about, you know, about what he's dealing with me about. Well, I don't know. This is not the climate for that. You know, this is, I don't even see this, you know, because God is like that. Like he'll start dealing with you about something just like this move uh, for me. God dealt with me about that two years ago and in a climate where I I was comfortable. Like I didn't see the need to, to move. Everything was okay. My landlord was good. You know what I mean? You know, whatever. But I got this vision that God showed me of a U-Haul truck backing up into my driveway. And I'm like, okay. Like I saw it, but that was an indicator to me at that time that it's going to be time to go. And God had began to deal with me about getting rid of stuff. Like I was taking stuff down in my bedroom two years before, taking stuff down, decluttering. It's like the Holy Spirit was like, you know, get rid of some of this stuff. I was getting rid of stuff and what, but it came a point to where I felt like it was just me because I didn't really see anything happening. And then I began to kind of doubt, might as well be transparent, doubt and be like, okay, God, did you really show me that? Was that really you? Or was that something that, you know, I just wanted to do? You know what I mean? And so even in that, I kind of stopped for a moment. I kind of uh, paused. And let me tell you something else. You could have people in your life because I had someone or people in my life at the time and I was telling them, hey, I got this feeling like God want me to declutter, like God want me to get rid of stuff, like God want me to do. And people were saying, well, what you going to do about furniture? Well, what you going to sit on? Well, what you going to, you know, well, how you going to do this? You know, it made me almost kind of doubt what God was even saying. But that's how God is. It's just like him you know, to tell you things in a season where there's nothing happening. <laughs> That's just like him to tell you things in a season where nothing is happening. Nothing is going on. You don't see it. It's sunny outside. The weather is great. What do God mean? Prepare for a storm, a, a really huge storm is coming. I, the weather has been perfect. He knows. I always say, and I love to call God this. He's the father of all times. Okay. He knows every time, every season for everything. He knows every second, every minute, every hour, every day, every month, every year. So he's the God of a thousand years. He sees 10 years up, up the road where we're only seeing what's in front of us right now. So pay attention in this season. I don't know who this is for. Pay attention in this season to what God is telling you to do because it's just like him to tell you to do something in a season where nothing is going on. Listen to the voice of God. Don't listen to people because God didn't give them the vision. God didn't tell them what to do. Okay, he, he, he might be speaking to them, but he's speaking to them according to whatever's going on in their life. All right, he's not speaking to them about what's going on in your life. He's speaking to you about what's going on in your life. And then, you know, you let the chips fall where they may with everybody else. The Bible says, and this is what's coming to my spirit right now, it's better to obey God rather than man. Okay, I'd rather obey God and listen to him then listen to man or listen to people, you know, and then you got to be careful because everybody's relationship with God is not the same. All right. It's not, it's not the same. You know, they, they, people say these days, they got a relationship with God and you got to test that, you know, and see what type of relationship that is. Like, do you really talk to him or do you just talk to him when, you know, you having a bad day or when things, you know, when you done been hurt again, when you done been broken again, when somebody done, you know, then, then, then hurt your feelings or stump your toe, you know, then there you go. You know, you go to God. Is that, is that the relationship you have? The trauma relationship, the hurt relationship, because that's all you'll know God for. But you got one of those relationships where somebody could stump my toe today and pat me on the back tomorrow. Guess what? I, you know, I'm still, I'm gonna tell God all about it. Like I'm, I'm, I'm his friend. You know, I have that type of relationship where it's no matter what's happening in my life, God knows about it. And I'm talking to him about it, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Okay. Do you have a good, bad, and ugly relationship with God? <laughs> but when God showed me that about that move, I was like, 
okay, but I got a little discouraged because it was going on two years. I know what I saw, nothing was happening until one day out of the blue, my landlord, you know, said I have just paid the rent. He was like, hey, I need to talk to you about something. I'm like, what? Just out of the blue. But Holy Spirit spoke to me right then and there and said, he's going to ask you to move. He's going to sell the house. You know, we met and that's exactly what he said. You know, he done gotten to the point to where he no longer wanted to, to rent and he just wanted to sell the place. But, you know, he was going to give me some time to get out and whatever. Long story short, I promise you, when he said that, it was months that went by. He never said anything else about it. Or maybe he forgot about it or changed his mind. But then I reached out to him last year, like around November. And I was like, hey, you know, I know we had a conversation like months earlier and you was talking about selling this place. Is that still your intention? And he was like, oh yeah, yeah, that's still my intention. And then he was like, yeah, I'll give you about three or four months to, you know, to move out what <laughs> so you know I'm like oh my gosh and it was on then but because I had listened to God in the dry season when nothing was happening I didn't have much to move you know I mean I got rid of some stuff you know there was a lot of papers and you know and stuff like that but that move was a blessing that move cost me eighty three dollars and guess what? <laughs> I did. I was trying to look for some movers to help me move because I had movers to help me move in. And I paid like $400 for that. Okay. Just to move around the corner. All right. You could have walked around the corner and they charged me $400. Well, they actually charged me three something. I gave them a hundred dollars too, but cause they was really good, but still it was a lot of money. So I was like, okay, I need, but the Lord wanted to show me, I need you to trust me. Okay. And so I was like, God, and I remember on my knees one morning, I told God, I said, listen, I said, I don't have the money. I don't have the money to move. I don't have um, the money, you know, pay for movers. I was like, God, I don't have the money and I don't know when you know, I don't know where I'm gonna get this money from and I gotta move out like ASAP. I didn't even have a place because I had been searching for places for like months and it seemed like the rent was high. It was $2,500 here. It was $2,800 here. It was $3,000 here. Well, it was $1,200 here, but it wasn't in such a great neighborhood. Well, it was this and I was like, I can't afford these rent prices. You know, I remember when rent prices was $750, okay? And at the time I thought that was a lot. But they ain't, that ain't nothing compared to what the rent prices is today. And I began to tell God, I was like, I don't have it, God. I just don't have it. And the Lord, I felt like Moses when he was on the, the rock. And, um, you know, and he told them, the children of um, Israel, he was like, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord take place. Because they were getting fretful. You know, Pharaoh's army was like on their backs like Pharaoh's army was so close. It was like they could feel his breath on their backs and they were getting nervous. It was Pharaoh's army, them and a big red sea in front of them. They began to doubt was cursing Moses out, <laughs> you know, and whatever. But he told them what the Lord said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord take place. And God parted their red sea, put fire in between Pharaoh's army and the children of Israel. And it stayed there long enough until they crossed the sea. Okay, I don't know if you just got a word from that, <laughs> but stand still and see the salvation of the Lord take place. God didn't just bring you to the rock to just leave you there and then let your enemy slay you. Okay, right before his eyes, the devil is alive. No, God brought you there because he needs you to see something. All right, so that Red Sea, I know some of you are waiting on your Red Sea to part. And God is saying, I'm about to part it because he definitely parted it for me because I didn't see no way. I'm like, you see what I made God? You see, I don't have the money. And God knows I went on a fast with my kids. We fast the first three days of every month. The Bible says in Matthew 18 and 20, that where two or three are gathered together, touching and agreeing, there he is in the midst. 
And that's me and my family's motto. And so we touched and agreed. And I told them, I said, we gonna fast together. You know, because while we fasted, you know, the first three days of the month, you know, everybody was pretty much doing their own thing. And then at the end, we would come together and just say what God dealt with us with, you know, and all that. But this month, God was leading me to do something different. It was like, no, y'all all come together. We touched and agreed. We fasted from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Now, my kids weren't used to that. <laughs> but I'm telling you, by the end of that fast, we were like wore out because it was like our bodies had just taken like it had just taken a toll over all of our bodies and i'm like what is going on the warfare you know and what god was about to do that was a monday before we went on that fast i was like i lord i don't even have a place and this man is telling me to move and do all this stuff we went on a fast that monday Okay, the end of the fast was that Wednesday, and I told the kids, we coming together. I said, we touching and agreeing. I said, because I'm believing, I said, that God is going to open a door for us to get a place, right? And so that's exactly what God did. We fasted that, that Monday to that Wednesday. Let me tell you something. By that Friday, okay, that Friday evening, before I could even get off work, Holy Spirit, just told me, look on Zillow. And I was like, Zillow, wasn't even thinking about it, wasn't even, you know, what I looked on Zillow and the place that I needed to move in came right up. It was right there. You know, I had been looking on Zillow, right, for months and had not seen anything. And I was like, oh my goodness, Lord. What is happening? What is taking place? I called and everything, even in that process, went so quick. They allowed me to go and to view the place. And then the girl was like, well, you're going to need $1,300 down. I'm going to tell you, I did not have $1,300. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? $1,300? I didn't have $1,300. I'm like, as a matter of fact, I only had about $5 in my bank account. And so I'm like, I don't have $1,300. I don't see how. She was like, well, you know, because you had to go through this little credit um, thing. And I didn't know if that was going to, you know, I was like, well, it'll probably be a couple of days before, you know, that come back. It came back in 24 hours. She was calling me and let me know, hey, your credit was approved. You need $1,300. And, but I wasn't going to get paid until like later, you know, in the week. Cause this was a Monday. I was like, ma'am, I don't, you know, she was like, well, you know, we don't hold the places for that long. She was basically telling me you either got it or you don't. Okay. We don't hold places like that. Got off the phone. Didn't know what I was going to do. The Lord led me to call my, my landlord. Long story short. I was, I was beginning to talk to him and I was like, Hey, did you have plans to give me my security deposit back? You know, he was like, you need the security deposit. And I was like, yeah, he was like, I'll go ahead on and give you that right now. And I was like, what? He was like, yes, you can go ahead on within seconds. He sent me my security deposit back, which was $860. So I was still short, but I was like, okay, I got some of it. The, the week seemed like it went so slow and the girl was kept calling me from the office and she was like, people are really wanting this place. She was like, you know, do you have the money? And I told her, I said, ma'am, I'm not going to have the rest of the money until Friday when I get paid. I said, and you know, depending on how the pay falls, it may be Friday. I said, it may be next Monday. She was like, well, I don't know if we can have, you know, we can hold the place that long. She said, you know, cause it's first come first serve. Long story short, again, by Friday, <laughs> you know, I'm thinking, well, the check ain't going to show up in my account until Monday. So, I mean, God, if this is of you, then you're going to have to do something. The check, this has never happened with my job. The check showed up in my account Thursday night. I was like, oh goodness, God, you are so good. I was able to get the other half of the money, pay the security deposit, and there we go. But then I was like, God, okay, now how are we going to move? I don't see how we're going to do that. God blessed me to get on Facebook. I got on the marketplace because I had not been on Facebook for like eight months um, at the time. And I was like, God was like, get on the marketplace. I sold some things on the marketplace. God blessed through a sister of mine. 
I was just talking to her. Didn't, you know, it was just talk. She, next thing I know, she came to my office and she was like, girl, she said, God just laid on my heart. She said, here, she said, please don't be offended. She said, but I just want to bless you. She blessed me with $75. And I was like, girl, you don't have to do that. She was like, I know you're trying to do stuff. She said, God laid it on my heart to do. So I just wanted to do. Yo, that $75 went towards the the, uh, U-Haul. I had asked another friend of mine. I was like, God, I don't know about movers. But this other friend that I asked, we we stayed in the same area. And uh, I said, who moved you? Because I'm thinking she's going to tell me somebody who moved her. And I'm going to reach out to them and whatever. She said, girl, she said, uh, these kids and a U-Haul. Well, mind you, earlier in my story, I said in my vision two years ago, God showed me a U-Haul backing up into the driveway. And so I was like, I told her, I said, you know what? Thank you. I said, that's confirmation for me. I went and rented the U-Haul. The U-Haul was $83, $83 move. It was only me and my kids. And we got everything up out the house, everything that was left in one trip. I took the U-Haul back probably within less than, it would well, probably wasn't even an hour. I took the U-Haul back and we just did everything else. God is so good. <laughs> and I know this started out about me telling you why I've been gone for so long, you know, and whatever. But trust me, you are getting news that I, I ain't even shared any place else, not even on the YouTube channel. But I just want you to know how good God is. I didn't know what was going on these last eight months. You know, it was just, it was a lot of things. I, you know, broke a lot of ties um, with people. And when I say with people, let me add some context around that. I broke ties with people who God told me to break ties with, and they were old relationships, you know, um, with people that I had given my number to that, um, wasn't serving me anymore, who God had really told me to ask years ago. And I just didn't, you know, I, I asked them for a little while and then I, you know, opened the door back up to friendship and God told me November 29th, 2023, walk away and that's exactly what i did and um pastor jerry flowers i was listening to a podcast of his and it's called necessary adjustments and in that podcast he said it's more than just blocking the number he said it's more than just blocking them he said sometimes you got to get the number change and when he said that because god had been dealing with me about getting my number change and it came through so many other um things that made it confirmation for me that that's what I needed to do and I was like okay so I ended up changing my number in no way you know did I was I changing it for church family or anything like that I changed it for other um for other relationships that I had um, either started or had going on, you know, and whatever. Sometimes when God puts you in a season of quietness, there are certain things or certain ties that you have to let go of. There are certain people that can't go with you, and I know you've heard this before, to your next level. They can't go with you to your next level. They can't They can't travel with you. Okay, they may got their bags, but guess what? They ain't going with you, <laughs> you know, and they need to be cut off, you know, because where God wants to take you or what God wants to do with you and for you, those people can't come along. Maybe they were the ones that always pull you down, or maybe they were the ones that always distract you to keep you from doing the things that God has called you to do. And so God will put a wedge in between you and them. And trust me, when God says walk away, he means walk away. Okay. Um, so after I got my number changed, I, I felt bad. I was meaning to go back and give it to the people that, um, my family, uh, you know, certain church family and whatever. And I just, I just never did it. You know, I was just trying to see what God wanted to do and how he, he wanted to do and whatever. And then too, when you're in a season like that, you don't want everybody speaking to you. You don't want everybody's, you know, opinion. You don't want, cause some people want to be nosy. You know, let's, let's be honest and real. Some people just want to be nosy. Just want to find out what's going on. Well, why are you doing this? 
well why well why is this well why is that or they texting you and asking you certain questions and this was the season for me where i just didn't want to get caught up in no unnecessary um conversations or a conversation where i'm supposed to be seeking god and seeing what he wants to do and i'm being caught gossiping you know i'm being caught talking about things that god didn't give me permission to talk about it was really like i was in a cocoon you know and whatever i've had people to you know some people to walk away for no apparent reason don't talk to me anymore i have no idea why but to god be the glory <laughs> you know i mean so it's just it's just been one of those pulling away you know type type years it's not because you know I, oh my gosh i am so perfect god just loves me it's nothing like that okay trust me god loves everybody uh and he don't have favorites okay it's just a necessary adjustment okay so anyway listen i went on with that i don't know I did not mean to to go all into that, but listen, that was for somebody. Say amen. <laughs> you can pass around the church plate and then we can, you know, for that message, and then we're gonna move on. <laughs> oh my gosh, as the Lord wills as to what this podcast is really about. <laughs> but you know, hopefully, wait for God. Wait on God. Because remember, if you don't get nothing else, it's just like God to tell you to do something in a season where nothing is happening, okay? That's just like God. He knows what you don't know. He sees what you don't see, okay? So you're going to have to trust him. Just trust him, trust the process. Trust him, I promise you. And you're gonna be hurt, you know, because you gotta let some things go. You gotta pull away from some things and you're gonna feel so alone. God, did you mean for me to be this quiet for this alone? But trust me, when you emerge, when God emerges you, it's gonna, you're gonna look around and you're gonna see the reasons why he did it, okay? It's for your good. It's just a necessary adjustment, as uh, Pastor Jerry Flower said. But let me, because I know I'm, I am over. This is probably the longest episode this podcast has ever seen. <laughs> but listen, this other podcast, will allow me to walk in the gifting of being a personal development coach with a spiritual twist, right? Because let's face it, most of our battles are spiritual, okay? As it is with matters of the heart, it's never preaching or bashing or conforming anyone to believe what they may not believe, but for individuals to see things from a different perspective and seeing God's message in plain sight. So I received my coaching certification back in 2022. And I wonder what in the world would I do with this? Like I took the class, I paid for the class. Oh gosh, I paid for the class, <laughs> you know? And I was like, okay, I'm thinking I'm gonna do something right after that, you know? Okay, I'm about to, I'm about to get things going. And there was crickets for two years until January. <laughs> Right. So thing is, before there was a name to it, I was already um, one. I was already a personal development coach or an encourager um, since the age of 18. I loved helping and talking with people. God would give me what to say in a time of need. Um, it was encouragement in which God allowed me to create a blog in which I ran for five years. Um, in 2020, I went to YouTube. You know, in 2021 came Matters of the Heart. And 2024 is bringing you, drum roll please, the girlfriend's girlfriend. Yes, I am so excited as this podcast is, um, is for any girl who has girlfriends, but maybe you've been friends for so long, you have simply lost touch with one another. There are the calls, but it's nothing like it used to be. The phone disconnected and you have no idea when that dial tone went silent. You need a good girlfriend or friends you can hang out with, share some laughs, talk, ask questions without judgment, and just be you. Well, welcome to the Girlfriend's Girlfriend podcast, where I will offer, with the Lord's help, um, words of wisdom, encouragement, insight, and prayer in most cases. So I'm an unbiased person who will give you an unbiased opinion, but mostly 
Consider this your adult time and hangout session with me, your host, Rashonda. We'll talk about a little bit of everything, and there will even be an opportunity for you to send me your questions to answer on air. So it's a life, lifestyle, and spiritual podcast where we'll dive into life's most challenging journey, relationships with others, ourselves, um, our friends, and everything in between. So, um, so yeah, so you can think of it as your monthly outing with the girls where we explore the best ways to move forward together because because guess what? Every girl needs a friend. So I'm hoping you will start this new journey with me for right now. The Girlfriend's Girlfriend podcast will be monthly, but packed with the kind of information I hope will help heal, comfort, and speak to the girlfriend whom either doesn't have one or the group of girls who just want to hang out and talk about the things that affect um, them directly or indirectly. So I wanted to share this information with you first my loyal listeners, right, of Matters of the Heart podcast to let you know we'll be moving to a new home. So come and join me. Um, We have so much more talking and discovering to do. The preview episode of the Girlfriend's Girlfriend podcast will premiere Monday, September 30th. This will be your first dibs in listening to the preview show uh, first before the big announcement on Wednesday, October 2nd over on my YouTube channel. So just a thank you for listening, downloading, and subscribing to this channel. I hope you'll be even more eager to listen and join me over there. The link to that episode will be in the show notes. Listen, you can catch the first episode of the Girlfriend's Girlfriend podcast, October 30th. Invite your girlfriends and their girlfriends because it's girl time, right? So I'll see you over there. And um, thank you so much again for just being a loyal listener to this podcast station. I will still be posting things to Matters of the Heart. Um, with Rashonda um, occasionally I do have some things that I want to share I feel like I feel like I need to share maybe close around Christmas because it's talking about gifts hmm (laughs) so anyway so be on the lookout for that but mostly I'll be over there with the girlfriends girlfriends okay so yeah pack your bags we're going but you're going with me. Okay. (laughs) So I will talk to you later. I hope you have the most amazing day. Be blessed and I'll see you around.